Hey, yo there. So, as mentioned in episode 96, I recorded another two hours of material with Michael Wan about the Susquehanna mystery. We chatted about baseball's theosophical and Freemasonic connections, impact craters, Herkimer diamonds, serpent wisdom, and personal transformation along the 40th parallel, which is what this clip is about. I thought this was the most important aspect of the entire four hours of conversation we had, and despite it being recorded for Patreon, I thought this bit was worth sharing with everyone. Again, this is just a part of what was a two-hour-long addendum to episode 96. It was pretty lively and is well worth a listen, and for just two bucks, you won't find a better deal in the podcasting game. Well, it could be free. That'd be a better deal. But hey, I'm poor, so, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. Anyway, I do hope you enjoy this clip with Michael Wan. (laughs) Let's wind down towards the end here, man. I don't want to keep you too much longer because, you know, shit, we've spent way too much time together here recently. But (laughs) I did want to ask you about the rights of the 40th parallel, which, you know, this is the major focus of the book that accompanies the video, or the videos, I should say. And you outline what you call the rights of the 40th parallel in your book. And this is a, an aspect of personal transformation that, that goes along with this whole story. It's, and that aspect is appealing to me, and I know it's appealing to the audience. You know, we're doing a lot of shadow work here. We're talking a lot about shadow work here and integrating. And I think this is a good companion to those sorts of conversations. So, you know, tell us a bit about this four-step journey that you've outlined in the book here and how it relates back to our overall conversation that we've been having. First of all, I want to, uh, I want to thank you for coming here on this particular topic. I've gone on a couple podcasts before this, and I've done a lot of talks before this. And I don't often get to talk specifically about the rights of the 40th parallel because much of the conversation is about all the stuff we've, we've been talking about because it's interesting and it's very tangible and, and all the things which we just talked about. But all of that, in my opinion, you know, this is as the guy who's talking, whatever, that, whatever value that would be worth, all of that earlier stuff is just context and it's context for the rights of the 40th parallel. I've said a bunch of times in this talk today that there's something special about this river. I don't know what this means, but it means something. And they're pointing to this location. And, you know, the, the true Tao we can't talk about. There's something special. Again, there's special places everywhere. And I, I don't, you know, this isn't a competition. So this isn't, we don't want to go down that path. But there's something very, very special about this river. And there's something very, very special about the specific location of the 40th parallel and the Susquehanna river and all the stuff we talked about before is just the, the finger pointing at the moon. And this here's the moon. The moon is at the end of the day is particularly if you're a listener of this podcast, it's crazy out there, right? I mean, there's no two cents about it. Like, imagine what it was like to be your grandparents or your great-grandparents. I mean, certainly there's always crazy stuff going on. But life on Earth right now, it's changing so fast. And all this stuff is going on. And just from the most basic human being level, like to be alive right now is is unique and intense. And, you know, however you want to go look at it. I just want to say this is special. And it's my personal opinion that... You know, I think it's all connected. And so us being alive at this time is, is significant. And being able to, to make sense and process and, and do whatever it is that you think life is about, it requires inner work. And this is probably one, you know, it's a very intense time to live during, you know, an apocalypse. That's what this is. It's the end of one age. It's the birth of a new age. And the tool which has been used to influence where we are now has been revealed to us. You know, it's always been there, like all of these clues. It's like, hey, look at this. So I'm just pointing out the obvious. The rights of the 40th parallel is a model in how to come and interact with this space. This came out of a couple different, a couple different inspiration. So one, I personally, as all this was going through, as all of this was coming up in my life, I was going through a whole bunch of stuff. 
You know, I was going through my own apocalypse, you know, world collapsing, new world being formed. And so I had that. And, you know, I've been to, I've been to some places which are known to be mystical before. And I've gone there. And then once I've arrived there, I've always been like, all right, now what? You know, what do I do? And like, you know, oh, you go and you look for a vortex or maybe you go do this. And I thought that was cool. And I've had amazing experiences, but I always was, was wanting something with a little bit more, a little bit more structure. And so as all of this was happening um, in my life, figuring this, this story coming out and like whatever's going on, I'm also spending a lot of time exploring the area because I actually live at the Susquehanna River in the 40th parallel. That's the biggest irony of the whole thing. I didn't discover this until I moved here. I started going to these different parks. And when I was going to these parks, I'm discovering all of this different stuff. I'm like, oh, this was important here. And I'm also learning a lot about uh, the idea of, of, of goddess worship because that's a big part of this. And within goddess worship, and really this is, this is general within any of these ancient understandings of reality, there's a, a, a cycle of um, starting something, beginning something, having life and something dying. You know, in astrology, you would call it cardinal, fixed, and mutable. And as I was going through this and looking at these different beautiful places and recognizing all of this really interesting stuff and changing inside this form, I was like, oh, there's a form going on. And it was this goddess form. And I recognized that there were certain areas that this really feels like it's a, it's a heavy sort of spot. But this is where, and it's dark, like I've brought seers to this one spot and they're all, they, I've, I've had two different seers I brought and both of them separate of one another have talked about how incredibly dark this one spot was. And that's the spot for destruction. And so the rights of the 40th parallel outlines these areas and provides a basic understanding of accessing this incredibly important location and tying it into this personal journey of being alive at this time, which, you know, that's a, a big picture idea, but the, the, the little picture idea is like, we're all individuals and we're all, you know, everyone's carrying something. And so this is a way of tying in the process of what it is you want to destroy or let go of or release and you go and you, you access this location for that. And then the second one, and, and I recommend in this, in this book that it's done over, you know, I don't know, weeks, months, a period of time in between. The next one is all about climbing to these new heights. And it's, you go up this, this maybe like 20 minute hike and it's in a nature preserve and it brings you to this hidden scaffolding. And this hidden scaffolding is underneath these wind turbines. And I had never been under a wind turbine before. Like you see them when you're driving, but to be literally underneath it. So probably like 35 feet away from the base. It's, it's uh, fenced off, but they're rather majestic. And there's this there's this amazing view of this of the river and the river is rather spectacular here i mean it's breathtaking particularly if you have uh, a good angle on a, on a good day and there's a scaffolding and there's a, a painting there i mean this this is how synchronistic this stuff is there's a painting there of benjamin latrobe do you know who benjamin latrobe is have you ever heard of him yeah i've heard of the name but i'm not is he a, is he an artist well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah, a painting. So he was, yeah, he was painter, known yeah. as America's first, he was a major Freemason. So he's like down around the time of like the, the founding fathers. And he hung around that crew and he was a Freemason and he was known as America's first architect. And so from a Freemasonic symbolic lens to call someone the first architect, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a good title, right? Because from the Freemasonic so, yeah. perspective, yeah. the architect is what they call the creator of the universe. And so Benjamin Latrobe is known as that. And there's a painting by Benjamin Latrobe from this exact vantage point from, I don't know, like 1750. And so here you are, 
and you're sitting in the city, you can line up, you can see this watercolor painting, you could look out and it connects you. And the point I'm trying to make here is there's this, this location, which, which is laid out in the rights of the 40th parallel is just in the most, in the most almost mundane way, it is completely transcendent. And so this particular walk is all about creation because that's the next step. Once you destroy something, you need to fill it up. And so what's going to make more sense than you climb this one particular trail and you're underneath these turbines on top of a hill um, on Turkey Point and you're looking from the same vantage of the grand architect, you know, regardless of, of, of what you feel about that. Like, you know, those are the symbols. And so then the third one is, is at high point. And this is like the epicenter of it all right on the 40th parallel. And these are all within 10 minutes of each other by car. And you go up there and it's got the sun and the moon and it's unbelievably majestic. You go up there and you just sense that you're in this special spot. And this is all about balance. What else are you going to do there? Right? It's got a sun and a moon. It's the 40th parallel. This is the epicenter of it all. So it's, once you go and you destroy something, and once you get the inspiration to go and fill it with something which you want to, then you go to the third location, and this is where you go and you find your balance because life's been pushing you left and right. And that's, that's usually considered the, uh, the goddess triangle or the goddess cycle, but there's a fourth part of the rites of the 40th parallel because everything is in four as it relates to the Susquehanna for whatever reason. And there's this location. It's about like, I don't know, it's like it's further away than the other three. The other three are real close to one another, 10 minutes by car. And this one's probably like 10 miles up the road. And it's a little bit tricky to get there. And you find the craziest looking boulders. They look, they have a pantina, a shine and a texture, which I've never seen before. And they have all of these that what geologists call potholes, which are supposedly caused by a, a grain of sand, which gets in like a, a, a tiny whirlpool and eventually makes these holes. But, you know, I don't, that's not, that doesn't make sense to me. You know, I think there's something else going on, but this is also in this really kind of strange area. You're in the shadow of, of three mile Island. Quite literally, there's a nuclear power plant half a mile upstream from you and there's all of these power lines and it's got this real kind of like whereas some of the spots you just came from are beautiful and charged that way this one's just got a ton of energy it's got three mile islands got these these rocks and it's all about like all right now i'm going to pull it all together and integrate and that's what the rights of the pair of the 40th parallel is it's this guidebook which kind of lays out how to go i mean I'll take a step back. This location, the 40th parallel uh, at the Susquehanna River, is within a half a day's drive of the largest population center on the earth. So from Boston down to Washington, D.C., this megatropolis. You know, this is this is relatively close. It's 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 90 minutes from Philly. It's 90 from Baltimore. It's 90 minutes from Baltimore. You were saying you're in Baltimore, you know, a little bit further from Boston, DC. But the point being is, and is this location is accessible and it's powerful. And for people who this speaks to, this is, I mean, you could go there and have your own amazing time. And I encourage anyone to do that. But for those who are looking for like, all right, I want to know where to go and what to do and I want to have the scoop that's what the that's what this is and so it's a 26 page guidebook which goes through the different walks explains what to look for how I sense it energetically kind of like how I was describing the the grand architect and what it ultimately does is it provides a real working model with processing the inner world at a very, very significant location during a very, very significant time. Dude, that's fantastic. I am really glad that we were able to talk about that because I didn't realize it was part of the story. Like, you sent me the book. I watched all the videos. I watched all the videos first, and then I read the book, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's a really cool 
interesting discovery that you made here, you know, with this alchemical ritual that takes place all up and down this river in Pennsylvania and down to Virginia. It's like, oh man, that's fantastic. It's so interesting, very mysterious. But it's that personal connection that you can make to it and use it for betterment of yourself. And I think in the book you even write, like, it's not just good for you, it's good for the collective. It's good for you. It's good for humanity. Because if you better yourself, you're bettering the tribe, so to speak. So let's take that one step further. So the whole idea behind the river altar, the building of the of the first fruits of of globalism, of computer technology and electrical distribution on the river was so it can hold influence over the planet. And the reason being is D was interested in con- commanding the guardian spirits of, he wanted to be influential. And so when we go and we, we first look at that as an idea and then, and say so like, okay, well, that's an interesting idea. And, and then we go and look and we say, well, it seemed to have worked. I mean, they said this is what they were going to do. I mean, that's what Enochian magic is about. It's, it's about the, the command or part of it, at least, you know, through, through the Enochian, through opening the watchtower, you can go and command these chaotic forces to control the, the guardian spirits of earth. That was what, what D was interested in and was interested in it from an expansionist perspective. And that's what they did. And the reason why they went to the Susquehanna is because it was the guardian of the planet. You know, I say, I I treat that like a hypothesis, but then you go and you look and you're like, you know, it seems to have a high degree of, of, of weight to it. When you go and you look at everything, which we talked about from the geology to like all these special markings, like for whatever reason, this, this river is very, very significant and, and, and is, uh, is being used as a tool. So if that's the case, and particularly since the magical working completed on the opening of, of High Point on May 12th, uh, 2007. We know that because 400 from a Kabbalistic perspective means completion. The spirit's back and the spirit's influential. And what's it influential on the globe? You know, this is, this is a, this is a, a grandiose statement. I know, but. But if you can settle into it, <laughs> if you settle into it, if there's any sort of, of, of actual causal relationship, and my, sen- my sense is it is, and my, my rational mind has been satisfied that it is, and, and my inner world has been, sensed that, uh, has been satisfied that it is. When people come and do this, I mean, this is very similar to what we're talking about, the difference between a Herkimer diamond and let's say an expertly cut diamond, maybe the difference between um, high magic and low magic. There's a certain level of authenticity of like the rawness. And certainly a high degree of high magic has been placed upon this river. But there is something incredibly powerful about the individual with their own magic of their own inner transformation and their own alchemy. And as that's tied into this guardian spirit and is spread throughout because that's what we've seen happen to the other stuff which is put upon the river you know that's one of the ways which we harmonize we write this ship you know that's assuming you come from a perspective that that you think that the ship which we're on needs a little bit of 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 writing i i fall under that that category and my sense is this has always been part of the plan as well. Whoever, however this was set up, however this was set up, I believe that this river to be used consciously during this particular time period, because it doesn't look like things are going to get any more comfortable next week. Like this is a way where a large amount of people can access it. And the way the book was even written, I don't know if you noticed the maps in it, you know how they're kind of like really colorful and interesting looking. Yeah, they're yeah, inspired. for sure. Yeah. I, they're kind of like a takeoff on, on a map you would see in, um, in Disney World. They're, very, they're completely accurate. Like if you would see that map, I mean, they're not, they're not in scale, but it's exactly what the walk looks like. And the reason why it was done that way is um, it's a symbol. And I have four of them to be cut out 
in the back so they could be hung up. Because if you don't live in the area, if you're not going to go and see it, if this is something you wanted to explore, if this is something you wanted to experience, particularly someone who is knowledgeable about inner world workings, here's your symbol. Here's your, here's your sympathetic magic. You can access it from anywhere. 